Hi everyone, it's November in the fall vegetable garden. It's time to take out the remaining summer vegetables and make the complete transition to cool season vegetables. In today's video, I'm going to do some chores off my to-do list and take you along with me. And I'll take you on a tour to show you what's growing in the garden. Please stay tuned. Now you might be wondering what these contraptions are over the pots. Well, I made these to prevent cabbage loopers from laying their eggs on the underside of the leaves, turning into caterpillars and eating the leaves. They also prevent rats from eating the vegetables. And I'll show you in the inset a recent video of a rat running around the garden. We had excellent harvest of tomatoes this year, and these are the last of the remaining tomatoes. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest those and take out this trellis. I'll place a link in the description about how to use Ziploc bags to protect your fruit from rats. All right, these are the last of the tomatoes. What a great year of tomatoes. So there you saw how quickly it was for me to break down the trellis. Here are the posts. I'm actually gonna store these together. And so next year when it's time to set up my trellis, all I have to do is take this out, put it back up and we'll be good to go. Let me show you how I prepare the pot for the next planting. First thing I have to do is take out this tomato plant. So I will remove this mulch. I'm gonna reuse the mulch. So I just set it off to the side in a bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plant. So I'm gonna take my cultivator and just get in there, pull up on the roots. Okay, just knock off as much of the soil as possible. Now that I have the plant out, I'm going to add some compost. This is Dr. Earth's all-purpose compost. Next, I add some organic fertilizer. Again, this is another Dr. Earth product. This is uh, called um, Dr. Earth Organic Natural Handcrafted Blend All-Purpose Fertilizer. Actually, that's a half a cup a fertilizer. Now I want to mix this in. I use this garden weasel, but I'm not going deep. I'm just going to mix it in to the top three or four inches because I don't want to disturb the soil structure in the pot below the top four or five inches. So I know there are earthworms living in that soil. So I'm just gonna get the top four to five inches, incorporate that in, and that should do it. Okay, okay, the soil is prepped and ready for the next plant. But until I plant, I'm gonna go ahead and put this compost right back on top. And this is to prevent the soil from drying out. Now that soil is gonna settle. So even though this compost sits up really high, over time it will settle and lower. I will water this to make sure the worms are nice and happy. In this plant cage, I have bitter melon. The fruit are small. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these and take the plants out. 
I'll also harvest the leaves and dry them out to make uh, tea. You'll notice that uh, this fruit here, as well as this one up here, as well as these that Ginger picked the other day, have turned orange. When the bitter melon gets to this stage, it means that they're ready to reproduce. And uh, they'll split open and then the seeds will fall to the ground. Now they have a very dramatic looking seed, so I'll show you what that looks like. Let's take a look at this bitter melon that's going to seed. Now, if I left this on the vine, it would naturally split open and the seeds would fall. But we picked them early, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice into this fruit and open it up. And you'll see that those seeds are very dramatic looking. They're red. Now that membrane on the outside will eventually dry in the sun and it will slough off. So the seeds are rather big but the seed will end up being uh, brown. They will not be red. All right, here we have the three bitter melon sliced open with the seeds exposed. I will place this in the sun and eventually that red will go away. That membrane will slough off and the remaining uh, large brown seeds will be collected and we'll store them for next summer. melon cage is taken down as you can see I've bundled all the parts together and I have labeled it and I'll go ahead and place it in storage I found something very interesting in clearing out my bitter melon pots notice what I found these little grubs so as I was clearing out the plants I uncovered these grubs. Now, what's interesting is that the other pots do not have any evidence of grubs. I've dug through it and I haven't seen any grubs in these other pots. Okay, so what I will do is I will remove, oh, the top six to eight inches of soil in this pot, and that should solve this problem. And that's one of the nice things about container gardening is that uh, this problem is localized. Uh, the problem is not in the other pots, so I can go ahead and refresh these with compost and fertilizer like I normally do. With this pot, I'll just, you know, take out the top six to eight inches, add more compost and fertilizer, and the problem is taken care of. All right, I had to dig down a good seven to eight inches before I was able to uh, scratch around down there without seeing a grub. So I think all the grubs are out and I'll backfill this with compost and fertilizer. And look what I found down at the bottom here, this big boy here, really nice size earthworm. So there's some earthworm still way down below um, helping out this soil. I'm going to harvest the remaining peppers from this Thai chili pepper plant and then I'll cut it back and let it overwinter. In these pots, I have snow peas. This variety is called Royal Snow. Pick these up at the garden center. I have two per pot and I'm training them up twine on this trellis. And I'm using the same clips that I used over the summertime for the first time um, that attach to the twine and then around the stem. And they seem to be working really well and the plants look nice and healthy. 
I have three Brussels sprouts. Here's one, here's two, and the third one is in this pot down here. Now you'll notice that this plant is quite a bit smaller than the other two, and that's because it's getting less sun than these two on this side. And that's one of the issues that I have in my garden. Uh, when the sun starts to set lower on the horizon as we get uh, closer to the winter solstice, this side of the garden gets shaded out. So I'm gonna be moving this to a sunnier location. Here I have two pots of spinach. As you can see, they're looking very healthy, nice big leaves. It's really nice to have spinach in the garden. If we wanna have a salad or add it to another dish, we can just come out here and pick what we need. Here I have two pots of carrots. I sowed this pot back on October the 21st and they're coming up nicely. I sowed this pot back in early September and as you can see, the plant is uh, really taking off. So I'm growing carrots in succession. So I should have a good amount of carrots here in the next, oh, probably three to four weeks. And then for the next couple of months after that. In this pot, I have Swiss chard, and they're looking kind of droopy because it was a warm day today. These should recover in the morning. And I have some dwarf pak choy interplanted in there. I also have some more dwarf pak choy in this pot here. You'll notice that there are some holes in the leaves, and I came out, um, oh, a couple of weeks ago and found slugs on the underside of the leaves, and they were causing the damage. So I did add some uh, organic slug bait down here and that's what this white material is and that seems to have taken care of the problem. In this pot I have beets that I sowed back in September and as you can see they're doing really nicely. Uh, this variety is the popular Detroit dark red. In this pot I have watermelon radish and these were sown on October the 21st. And here is the seed packet for these seeds. We use a lot of green onions in our cooking, so we will save the cuttings and plant them. So here's one pot, and here's another pot, and we still have another pot in the herb area. In this pot, I have a Japanese turnip called Tokyo Cross. Last month, back in October, I had a pot of these that were completely destroyed. And I couldn't figure out what it was. They were slugs. So what I did this time around is I laid down some snail bait. This is an organic snail bait that's uh, fading. I'm gonna probably put some more in and notice they're doing just fine. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and thin these out. I did plant about two seeds per hole uh, to, to guarantee good germination rate. And I'm gonna just go ahead and cut out one of them. Okay, those are thinned out and they're nicely spaced and we've got great germination. I mean, this is a painful process because I thinned out all of these um, sprouts. So I'll just go ahead and throw these in a salad, but it is a necessary evil if you want to get the best possible uh, production. These are dwarf pak choy seedlings that I started back in September. Uh, let's take a look at the root system. So you can see the roots developing and a few of the roots are, yes, they're growing through the bottom. So I'm gonna take these outside and start to harden them off. And over here, I have some Lacinato kale seedlings. I'm gonna prick these out and transplant them into uh, larger pots. All right, we're gonna place these seedlings outside uh, during the day and I'll bring them in at night uh, to harden them off and I'll do that for the next couple of days. Uh, I'm also going to protect them with this cage because I don't want those dreaded cabbage loopers to lay their eggs on them. So that will ensure that they will uh, stay healthy until they're ready to be planted. I'm going to transplant these seedlings uh, from 
the tray into one of these old cell packs from the vegetables that I picked up at the nursery. So let's go ahead and fill this cell pack up with some soil. It doesn't have to be all the way filled because I'm gonna add a little perlite. So about that much. I'm gonna dump that into the tray here, this white tray for mixing. And then I'm gonna grab some perlite and add some perlite to this mix for good drainage. Then I'll take my cultivator and just mix up the soil to incorporate that perlite. Right now I'm gonna add a little soil to the bottom of each of these cells in the cell pack. Okay, so that's what we have. Then I'm gonna go ahead and prick out these seedlings and transplant them into the cell pack. All right, so I'm gonna very carefully remove the seedling from this tray. I'm gonna take a, a knife, go to the bottom of the tray, gently lift it up. And get all the roots. I'm going to gently transfer this to a cell. So there's one. And we are going to backfill these cells. So those have been transplanted. Now I'll place them back inside and we will water it from the bottom up. All right, we're back at the propagation table inside the house. So I'm gonna just fill this tray with water. And over the next couple of hours, that water will be wicked up and drawn into the cell and moisten that soil. One of the advantages of having a container garden is the ability to move the pots. As the days are getting shorter and we approach the winter solstice, the pots over here on the right will get shaded out. So I'm going to move the pots to the sunnier location to the left. we have the pots moved and uh, notice that they are three across and the reason for that is for both Ginger and I to easily access those pots to water, maintain them, and to harvest. On the left hand side which is the north side of the garden are the snow peas and the trellis so they will not shade anything out when they get nice and tall. On the far end I moved our uh, sweet potatoes in the grow bags and we'll let those go for another month or two before we harvest them. In these pots we have the Brussels sprouts. They'll grow nice and tall and they won't shade anything out. And I have all of the other pots arranged so that nothing shades anything else out and they will get plenty of sun. And on the back table, we have parsley, mint. Here's some more Italian parsley, thyme, green onions. This is chives and basil. So there you have it. This is our November garden update. I hope you enjoy the tour. Let's take a look and see what we harvested. 
These are the last of the Thai chilies, the thinned out turnip greens, the last of the momotado tomatoes, and the last of the bitter gourd. I have links in the description relating to things that we're doing in the garden, so please take a look. Please consider subscribing to our channel. We would really appreciate your support. And as always, thank you so much for watching.